It's been a long wait for fans of the Stalker series, but a sequel to the original game is on the way and it looks fantastic. For those of you who aren't familiar, the original Stalker released way back in 2007, although it did get follow-up games in 2008 and 2009. The game is set around the Chernobyl power plant, but in an alternative reality where there is a second disaster. After the original disaster in the 80s, laboratories were set up in the exclusion zone to research the disaster, and due to these experiments, they caused another catastrophe. That's just typical, isn't it? After that though, strange anomalies and artifacts started to appear in the zone, and they're quite scary indeed. You play as a stalker, which actually stands for something. Get this, scavenger? Trespasser, Adventurer, Loner, Killer, Explorer, Robber. And Stalkers enter the Forbidden Zone to find and steal those valuable artifacts. The general premise for the game is actually based on a book from the 70s called Roadside Picnic. The zone is not a friendly place though. You don't just have to contend with the radiation, but also the monsters that have been created as a result of all of the experiments. And there are multiple factions out there all working for themselves and many of them will just try and kill you. They just want your loot, whatever it may be. Now, the last time that players jumped into a stalker experience was back in 2009 with Call of Pripyat. That was 14 years ago. Things have moved on quite a lot since then, of course, and so has the development of Stalker 2, originally being announced way back in 2010 before being cancelled in 2012, and then development restarted in 2018. And the developers, GSC World, are also a Ukrainian studio. So the fact that the game is releasing this year and they've continued development despite all of the challenges they're facing is incredible. When it comes to the story of the new game titled Heart of Chernobyl, it actually ties in directly with the story of the original game. With the new trailer, we hear that during those original experiments taking place in the first game, scientists were able to tap into something called the new sphere, the Earth's invisible information field. Don't worry if you don't know what that is because it's not real. The idea is that it's some sort of psychic field around the earth that contains the thoughts of people and the creatures on earth. Experimenting with this field is what caused the second disaster. And we don't know too much about the character that you're playing as in this game other than that their name is Skiff, but we do know that the game is going to be very big. 60 square kilometers in fact, which according to the Stalker website is one of the biggest open world games to date. They also say that you'll need over 100 hours of gameplay to explore everything that the game has to offer. And I mentioned a non-linear story, and that's because Stalker 2 will have player choices that have both short and long-term consequences, which can impact the game's ending. This is the same as the original game, which also had multiple endings based on your decisions as a player. The developers have also said that Stalker 2 is an independent sequel to Stalker 1. So while you're going to see a lot of similarities and themes and maybe even some returning characters, it's not a necessity to have played the original games. So what can we expect from the game? Well, first off, as you can see, it looks fantastic. It's running on Unreal Engine 5, so the environments look amazing. Stalker is an FPS game, but it's also a horror game to some extent, and you'll often be playing in the dark. And so lighting is incredibly important, and we all know how well Unreal Engine 5 deals with that. All of the cutscenes were motion captured too, and the developers have heavily relied on photogrammetry to improve the overall visual fidelity. And that also means that the creatures here in the exclusion zone are going to look as horrifying as ever. The developers haven't gone into too much detail about what to expect here as they want to keep some things back, but they have shown us the Bloodsucker, a mutant that Stalker players will be very familiar with, and it looks just as scary as you imagine it would. Thanks Unreal Engine 5. But you should expect new mutants too, as well as returning ones, and apparently even mutants of the same species will look visually different depending on the area of habitat. A nice touch, it's almost like they've got biomes for the enemies. I mentioned earlier that Stalker is part horror, and I think that's fair. It is, I remember playing the original game and being absolutely petrified of almost everything. It barely ran well on my PC at the time, but I still played it all the way through. The environments and the gunplay were really what kept me going. And moving around the game in the new zone is more of a slow process, and just like in the original game, you're going to need your anomaly detector and your trusty bolts. The anomaly detector acts as a detector and a Geiger counter, but its main purpose is to root out artifacts. Bolts are items that you can throw around you to detect anomalies, and anomalies come in many forms with electric, fire, gas, you name it, but they all have one thing in common. 
they're fatal and you don't want to go through one if you can avoid it. The bolts will be a necessary tool to find these anomalies and avoid them because they react with objects that enter them. Some of the artifacts you find also have player benefits like improved stamina, so they are worth going out of your way for. Stalker 2 will also use an upgraded version of their A-Life simulation. A-Life is a clever system which controls the way that the environment behaves inside the zone. This means the behaviour of characters and mutants, meaning the zone, will constantly change and feel alive. It also means that each player will have a unique experience when playing the game. The original game utilised a similar A-Live system and it was reported way back that when this system was made it was quite hard to develop it into the game but I'm no developer and things have obviously moved on a bit since then. But I'm sure their live simulation stuff will end up being very impressive. There was a really interesting video that the devs put out after E3 in 2021 talking about some of the mechanics of the game including proper animations for picking up weapon attachments and installing them on the go. The gunplay in this game is no joke and the developers have confirmed that there are more than 30 firearms in the game each with their own set of modifications and while your character will be able to install some of them while in combat the more complex and advanced upgrades will have to be done via a technician and speaking of weapons we have seen a brief bit of gameplay using something called the gorse gun which looks epic and it is one of the most powerful weapons in the game now thinking back, one of the best things about the original Stalker was the mods, and that's not something that a lot of modern games make easy. Mod support isn't often a priority. I'm happy to say though that GSC have confirmed that Stalker 2 will have full official mod support, and not only that, but after the release of the game, it will also get a multiplayer mode released as a free update. That could be really interesting considering the gunplay and the kind of environments that you're fighting in here. Bit of a survival-esque Tarkov vibe for sure. Sadly, PlayStation owners may be a little upset to hear that Stalker 2 is an Xbox timed exclusive. That means that the game will release on Xbox and PC first, and then likely on PlayStation a few months down the line. It's also coming to Game Pass on day one, which is another good reason to get that. There are three versions of the game to buy though, with the more expensive versions having some extra cosmetic content alongside access to two story expansions and the season pass. So we know at least there's two extra story DLCs planned. Now wrapping things up, We've definitely waited a very long time for a new Stalker game and so many games with a similar style have released in that time that have been inspired by it. The Metro series for example in particular has a very similar feel to the Stalker games and even shares a lot of the same developers. They have a similar setting but there was just something about the original Stalker game that still has something unique about it and great appeal. We don't have a specific release date yet, all we know is that it will release sometime this year, but I'm looking forward to seeing more. I can't wait for this one and it should definitely be on your radar. With that said, thank you for watching guys, let me know your thoughts on Stalker 2 down in the comments below. Drop me a like, help support me, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.